Track number three, I Know a Guy, is really intended to go straight into track number four, Ain't We Proud. It's how you experience them in the show. And this is a really great example that Greg and the entire team that put the album together, they, they tried to maintain the sense of what it's like to be in that theater to experience it together. So we're going to talk about these together. I Know a Guy is really the first time that this story takes off like a bullet train, and you start to meet the guys that, Don, that Donnie's putting together. And we're both musicians, and when you put a gig together, you constantly are like, I know a guy who can play amazing trumpet, or I know this guy who plays, he's got really good piano chops. Um, it's just this thing that we do, and so we built this song really on that. And uh, we tried as much as possible to maintain the, the, the sense of the scenes that happen as you meet the, those guys. On the cast on album. The, on the cast album. There's stuff we had to cut, but in general you really feel like what you feel like hearing in, in the, in the um, theater. And also, all the dance breaks are preserved. The amazing thing that you learn here is that Andy is able to go from scene to scene to scene without a, a scene change. There's no physical change of the scene. He's doing it all with bodies and light, with Jeff Croyer's amazing lighting. And there are no added bars. So what you hear on that album is the way you experience it in, in the cinema. In the theater. I'm sorry, in the theater. Well, it feels like <laughs> cinema. And the other thing to mention, just from a musical standpoint, is David Kreppel's vocal arrangements are unbelievable. The, they creep in at you right when Donnie goes into his sort of reverie about the Bobby Soxers and he's starting to really dream that this band could actually work. And then the counterpoint that David builds before it smashes into the band playing live in the club is unbelievable. And the, the clarity, the production on the album is so amazing. You hear every one of those lines, especially if you put headphones on. And that's one of the most amazing moments in the first act of the show is when you get the band for the first time performing live in a club because it's really these guys on stage playing. And Nevin Steinberg's sound design is just spectacular in the theater because the impact of that swing band sound coming at you suddenly directly from the stage is like nothing else. And you hear the difference between track three and track four. There, there's something in the production they've done where the, the, the quality of the sound of the Donnie Nova band sounds really different than the orchestra you've been listening to up to that point in the show. Yeah, and the lyrics in Ain't We Proud, we were, th this was an interesting challenge because these lyrics are ostensibly written by our leading character, Donnie Nowitzki, and he's writing them as lyrics for a song he's hoping will win a contest and right. capture the public's imagination, popular imagination. So he's writing things that are very snappy, lyrics that are very snappy and for kicks and really entirely upbeat. Um, and and that, a little shallow, actually. And a little shallow. It ain't a weekend in the country. <laughs> At all. <laughs> at all. It's definitely a song. And the other thing, you know, for a contest, and the other thing to, to remember is it's not the one that he even enters. It's a throwaway. You know, it's one that's not good enough to even be considered a, a runner to, to make it into the contest. So it's a bit of a challenge to write a lyric and a song that we know from a plot standpoint isn't actually good enough to win a contest. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs>